Once upon a time, otherwise known as before children, I did watch TV on occasion. And uh, as I think back on the TV shows I have watched, I, I watched Star Trek The Next Generation growing up, and Law and & Order in its various incarnations, NCIS, uh, Doctor Who. I, as I think about which shows I, I've watched, uh, I, none of those are a half hour long. None of those are, are, are half hour, because I, I, I want a story that has like, does something, goes somewhere. I want a, a meat, I want some meat to it. I want a plot twist, something. And um, half hour just really isn't long enough to do that. And, and so, and, and you know, how, if you watch an hour of TV, anyone know off the top of your head how many minutes of show did you actually watch? 44. 44, 45, that's the number. So uh, you actually, in 40, you watch an hour of TV, you actually only watch 44 minutes. But in those 44 minutes, Captain Picard could encounter a new alien life, hit some sort of hitch, and by the end have made galactic peace, or law and order, Lenny could have found the criminal, God rest his soul, I miss Lenny, and uh, found the criminal, and they could have gone through the whole prosecution, or in Doctor Who, anything could have happened, really, just anything. So, but in, in an hour of TV, or 44 minutes, you can cover a lot of ground. Especially if you, you go on to like a movie. If you have a movie, in a romantic comedy, you can have two strangers meet, uh, and, and then fall in love, and go through the requisite miscommunication, get back together, and get married. And, and like, you can do all that in two hours. You can save the universe in two hours, right? It doesn't seem to take that long to tell a good story when it's happening on, on screen. Especially, uh, you notice the speed of TV has sped up. Like if you go watch an old movie or an old TV show, things happen so much slower and now it's, it's, things move. It, it's rare for our lives to be as succinct and action-packed as what we see on TV. In 44 minutes, Captain Picard can de defeat the Borg and save the universe. In 44 minutes of my life, if you watch 44 minutes of my Friday afternoon, what you're going to watch is me sitting there typing. And the exciting moment is when I get from page two to page three of the sermon. Yippee! Right? That's <laughs> my life would not make a good TV show. This doesn't move very quickly. But that's, that's the nature of life, right? Our lives, it, it takes more than 45 minutes to, to do something, to, to tell a story, to live a, to live a good story, to tell a good story. Uh, it takes a while. And we don't get to have commercial breaks. We can't fast forward or skip over the boring parts. To, to live a good story, to live a, a life that matters, is a lifelong endeavor. Today we celebrate All Saints, the day when we are naming the, the saints and celebrating those who have gone before us, those who have lived a good story. The people whose lives and stories have intertwined with ours, not for 44 minutes, but for days and months and, and years, for decades. Those who are now, now gone. People who have lived a good story, and what makes their story good is how God has worked in and through them, and they have shown us grace, they have shown us forgiveness, they have shown us dedication, which reflect and show us something about the nature of who God is. The saints that we remember, there is a profound difference between what we watch on TV and what we see in the lives of, of the saints. Right? On a TV or on watching a movie, um, Things are tidy, right? If you start watching a show at 7, at 7.45, you're going to have the last plot twist, one more commercial break, and then wrap up, right? We know how this goes because we have watched it uh, many, many, many times, right? Everything has a, a sort of pacing to it. And whatever problem is, is, has been introduced in the first five minutes will be solved by the last five minutes until you uh, come back at the same bat time, same back channel, to, to watch it next week. And there's a new problem, unless you have Netflix. And who has Netflix here? Right? You can watch at any bat time, any, any time you want, right? It's Netflix. It's, it's dangerous. However, the problems in life, have you ever had a problem that you can resolve in 44 minutes? Right? If you think about it, I, I can't think of a single problem I've had that was like a real problem that I could solve in 44 minutes. There are burdens that people carry that are carried not just for an hour, but are burdens that people carry for months, years, decades. There are some heartaches that last 
a lifetime. And so our lives and the lives of the saints who we remember today, they are not predictable like TV. They are not neat and tidy. And I think that's the, the draw of, of a lot of these shows is, is that they give us the, the hope that maybe we could wrap up our lives in nice, tidy, tidy little bundles and wrap it all up that quickly. But it's not like that. Nothing, you ever notice nothing awkward happens? Like, Robin never had to call Batman and say, I have the sniffles, I won't be there today. Right? I, I, Lenny never has to call in and say, I broke my ankle, I can't make it in. And they have to, like, go shorthanded, unless it's essential to the plot. Right? The, and people uh, fall in love in, in a movie, uh, on a TV or whatever, we don't see the happily ever after. You ever notice that there are no sequels to romantic comedies? Can you think of a single sequel? I genuinely want to know. If you can think of one, I'd be intrigued because I want to watch it. Because I want to see what, what happens, like you get married or happily ever after. What happens when the two people have to figure out who does the dishes? Right? Because that, that's, that's life. That's the re real nature of living together. Uh, and so today we remember the lives of the saints, the, the stories of their lives, and, and I, I believe they are far more impressive than anything we see on TV. Not as grand, but I believe it's, they're more impressive because we are remembering and honoring people that have lived their lives following Jesus day by day, month by month, year by year. The people who have figured out how happily ever after works. It's by learning to, to forgive, to serve, to be patient, learning to be ambassadors of the peace of Jesus Christ, as Paul says in, in 2 Corinthians 5. We are remembering people who have shown us what it means to follow Jesus, who have lived good stories, not 44 minutes at a time, but a day at a time, a year at a time. We are remembering people who have lived through the good times and the bad, keeping the faith through thick and thin, a long faith in the same direction following Jesus. And I believe this is far more impressive than anything I've ever seen on TV. Now there is one way that Star Trek and NCIS and Doctor Who and all these other TV shows are like the lives of the saints. All of these TV shows, by the end of the hour, everything is fixed, right? You've hit a good ending. You have come to a situation where everything has been worked out. And at the end of a life of someone who follows Jesus, everything is going to be worked out. If you come to the end and it's not a good ending, then it means it's not the end. Like, we haven't got there yet. For those who follow Jesus, the ending is far better than a convenient plot twist in the credits rolling. The ending to the story of the saints for us who follow Jesus is described in Revelation 21 and 22, where we read that there is a new heaven and a new earth. The, the logical revelation is not that we go off to heaven, it's that heaven comes to earth, the new Jerusalem coming to earth, the new Jerusalem, and the whole the city of God, the world made right and new, a physical earth that we will touch and walk and enjoy, a place where God dwells among God's people and there will not be any darkness for we will all see by the light of God. There will be a tree full of the fruit and the leaves will be for the healing of the nations. The throne of God will be among us and we will guide be God's people. That is the end of the story for the saints. And after a lifetime, day by day, of following Jesus, there is this time that comes when the earth will be made new and the lives of the saints begin anew. And so today we not only remember the past, the lives of the saints, we celebrate the future that their lives continue in the kingdom that is to come, and the kingdom that we will join them at the end of our lives. And because we know the end of the story, we can become people of profound hope. We know how this story ends. We know that it is our faith that death is not the end, that after death there's the kingdom of God, and it's this place of peace and joy, of feasting, of abundance. And it will take more than 45 minutes to get there, to get everything wrapped up, but we have this ending to hold on to. We have this hope. And so all of our stories, all of our lives, always end in hope. No matter how bad a situation is, no matter how some broken something is, there is always hope. A hope that is far more stubborn than anything we can do. If you think of the hope that a parent has for a child, that they will grow up and, do, and live a good life, that is the hope that our Heavenly Father has for us, except our fa Heavenly Father is far more stubborn than any of our parents could ever have been. We know the end of the story for the saints before us. We know the end of our stories. And what that means for us is that we can't be cynics. 
Anyone here have a cynical streak? Me, right? I'll tell you, I, I was a cynic growing up. I was many more things than a cynic, words that I probably should not repeat in the pulpit. The point being, I was a bit cynical growing up. And I and went to seminary, still was a cynical streak, and I came uh, across this memoir of a, a 1920s pastor by the last name of Niebuhr. And he wrote a book called Leaves from the Notebook of a Tame Cynic. And that phrase right there caught my attention, and it has remained one of my defining understandings of what it means to follow Jesus. Tamed cynics. Anyone here have that, you know, that cynical streak? You know that ability to say, this is not going to work, this is going to fall apart, this is not going to happen? Right? I, I have that. It's in the back of my head. It's always telling me, Andy, this is not going to work. The number of times I have tried something in the name of Jesus Christ, tried a community event, tried a new way to worship, tried something new in a sermon, there's always that voice back there telling me, Andy, you are going to face plant this time, and it's going to be ugly and horrible, and you're going to look stupid, and it's going to fail. I have that voice. Maybe you have that too. Maybe you don't and if you don't god love you right tamed cynic though jesus got over being dead jesus got over being dead our cynicism is tamed by the cross and we look at the lives of the saints to have that faith nurtured because the good stories of their lives can help us tame the cynicism of our lives it's back there I know I struggle with it too. Jesus got over being dead. I look at the saints and see how they followed him faithfully in their lives, and it reminds me of the hope that I can follow him in my life too. I can hold on to that hope. And so I invite you this week, can you end your stories in hope? Right? Everyone's going to tell some stories this week. That's what we do. How are you doing? Well, let me tell you. Right? Right? There we always are telling stories. That's how we know each other. Can we practice being a people? Be cynical, right? This is way too much rain. It's too cold. And the combine's not working. Right? Be cynical, right? But end with hope. But it's going to work out because I follow Jesus. Our stories always end in hope. Thanks be to God. Amen.